Good afternoon, this is our latest video update on Typhoon Jalawan and also on Tropical Storm Rainier on this busy Saturday afternoon. We're actually trying to keep uh, updates on each system as brief as possible because there's a lot of things going on right now in the Western Pacific. If you have if you need more details, you want more information on this both of these systems, check out our blog and also westernpacificweather.com. We have more updates there as well. Even Robert Spera also issuing his own tube casts on uh, Jalawat. We also have some links uh, there and also uh, from the uh, videos that were sent to us by our viewers in Okinawa showing the destructive power of Jalawat as it blew, uh, blew across the islands. And also some images there as well so check that out. We begin right now with Typhoon Jalawat. Now moving away from Okinawa still remaining well inside the Ryukyu Islands. Last look at approximately 170 kilometers northeast of the island of Okinawa, about 80 kilometers south of the island of Amami. You can see right there. Maximum sustained winds have lowered, been lowered slightly to 165 kilometers per hour with gusts of up 240. Um, Jalawat is also accelerated to 30 kilometers per hour, moving northeastward. The winds are from JMA Joint Typhoon Warning Center of now. Uh, downgrade if you follow their one minute sustained winds have now downgraded Jalawat to a category 2 a typhoon but still a very powerful system the eye has been uh, clouded uh, look definitely much weaker but still nothing to take lightly here take a look at the infrared image and showing the eye of the system now almost uh, indiscernible here still have some strong convective activity actually particularly along the western portions of the eye uh, yeah, also being helped by the topography of some of the islands here but in overall the system is still very expansive starts to encounter some stronger upper level winds here and could actually become uh, ex-tropical in the next 48 hours as it moves across uh, Japan and for right now much of the convection is still across the Ryukyu Islands and with that we have several warnings uh, T-Core has now moved to one recovery in uh, inside Kaduna Air Base, which means that the 50 knot winds are have now ended, and uh, again, as they say, recovery. So, emergency personnel could could um, well, all but emergency personnel are uh, still should stay uh, inside, and non-essential functions will remain closed inside here. Also, uh, Japan Meteorological Agency are issuing its own plethora of warnings here still have storm high waves and storm surge and even flood warnings across the islands of um, uh, the Yorkus and even extending into the southern part of Kyushu Island still expecting those high waves warnings and also the threat of heavy rain and speaking of that this is our latest radar image from JMA showing again those bands of very heavy rain actually you can see those purple dots there presenting nearly 50 millimeters per hour of rainfall rates you can also see the center of Jalawat remaining just south of Amami also even some outer rain bands still affecting parts of Okinawa and for the most part though um, uh, rain should uh, begin to end sh should begin to taper off across Okinawa it's still going to continue across the northern parts of Ryukyu and even extending into Kyushu and uh, will overspread into Kyushu, Shikoku and even Honshu by later tonight and into tomorrow. Now along with the heavy rains you're still start you're still seeing very strong winds. Look at that. Forty meters per second sustained being reported here across the island, even though they are now located in the western part of the eye. And the forty meters per second that's around uh, 140 to 150 kilometers per hour and some of them are still reporting gusts of up to 165 kilometers per hour even 180 kilometers per hour in some of these uh, some of these stations now uh, Jalawat made landfall in Okinawa right around 10 or 11 a.m. local time there look at the island here actually let's take a look at the infrared the system crept along the western coast uh, brushing the western coast of Okinawa uh, right around 10 or 11 a.m. bringing very strong winds. Naha Airport actually reported a uh, gust, uh, gust of up to gusts of uh, as high as 220 kilometers per hour uh, earlier today. Th that is very strong winds definitely and even sustained winds of as high as 150 kilometers per hour also being reported across the islands here and even Kadana also reporting 
it's a fair share of strong winds as well. But for the most part, um, typhoon force winds have definitely ended across Okinawa, now shifting across Amami and perhaps eventually move towards the mainland Japan the next two days here. And speaking of that forecast, computer models can continue to track this system to the northeast, moving quickly now. And in fact, we expect this uh, system to make landfall. Uh, look at the 24 hour forecast here from JMA, per perhaps making landfall Sunday afternoon tomorrow along the Kii Peninsula, perhaps in the Wakayama Prefecture, or just east of that area, and Saturday afternoon as a Category 1 typhoon, perhaps. Uh, JMA also expect this to become a typhoon, uh, remain a typhoon. And uh, again, crossing the island of Honshu by Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, perhaps exiting into the northern Pacific by early Monday morning, weakening to a tropical storm uh, by that time, and will continue accelerating to the northeast, perhaps becoming extratropical by Tuesday. You can also see in this latest forecast track them JMA forecasting this to move just northwest of Tokyo. Timing here would be around Sunday evening. Weakening to a tropical storm, but still going to be bringing strong winds and heavy rains definitely across the region. So please, please prepare there uh, as well. Finally, we have the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's forecast and showing a north northeastward turn. They have their landfall point just uh, slightly east compared to JMA and look at this, tracking the system very close to Tokyo. So this uh, closest point of approach to Narita Airport is actually around just 70 kilometers. So they will definitely be feeling those strong tropical storm for force winds. Now thankfully, JTW is expecting this to weaken to a tropical storm just before it makes landfall, but still very big threat definitely across this entire region in the next 24 to 36 hours and also as you can see joint typhoon warning center expecting this to exit into the north pacific perhaps by sunday uh, early monday morning and uh, quickly moving to the northeast uh, perhaps passing just south of hokkaido and could move near the kuril islands uh, by monday and tuesday for now the threat remains across amami and the nearby islands still going to continue to see that strong typhoon force winds will taper by uh, later tonight and we expect improving conditions all across the Ryukyus um, uh, beginning tonight and into tomorrow in fact uh, Yayama Islands already uh, seeing lighter winds and also um, clear uh, weather for the most part they also actually reported very strong winds there as well we even have a, w a user here uh, sorry a viewer that sent us uh, a video there's well check the description below for uh, for the link on his uh, YouTube um, video but again after moving across the Ryukyu's Jalawar is forecast to move quickly to the northeast make the landfall in Honshu near the Kii Peninsula Sunday afternoon and could move very near Tokyo by Sunday evening and finally move to tropical storm Irinir well east of Japan again located approximately 730 kilometers east northeast of Tokyo Maximum sustained winds have now decreased to 85 kilometers, so no longer severe tropical storm. Though so still gusts of up to 120 kilometers um, per hour. It's moving north northeast, we're also accelerating to 35 kilometers per hour. And you can also see a system definitely becoming uh, more extratropical now. You can see a decoupling. You see the low, low level circulation center becoming more exposed. You can also see those stratocumulus clouds from the northwest signifying more dr uh, drier air that could be wrapping around the system as it interacts actually with the jet stream also an upper level low in this region and uh, forecast to actually take a look at the infrared image system also becoming more elongated still some uh, some convective active but again doesn't really matter anymore the system is well away from Japan and moving across the northern Pacific Forecast to quick uh, continue moving northeastward uh, very quickly. Could perhaps become an extratropical as early as tomorrow. Again, not really impacting anything in uh, this area. Also, Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecasting really the same thing here. Could actually see them give their final warning uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, we'll see that as well. And finally, we move on to the other activity in the Western Pacific. We're actually watching two low pressure areas or invests that could uh, develop into a tropical into tropical cyclones 
in uh, the next uh, few days perhaps by uh, the middle part of next week begin with ni invest 94w southwest southeast of micronesia you can barely see guam island here and uh, very scattered very sparse convective activity though there is a weak circulation center embedded along a monsoon trough but nothing really much going on here just yet uh, expect something to develop in this area that's why it is now an investment fact joint typhoon warning centers upgraded the chance to medium in terms of cyclone development in the next 24 hours so could perhaps see a cyclone in the next uh, three to five days we expect the conditions here to um, gradually improve wind shear is still somewhat moderate too strong here again it will take time for the system to consolidate it is a large one uh, and if actually if you look at the computer model forecast this batch of lines is what the computer models are expecting 94w to become some taking it to the north while some of them take it to the east i'm sorry to the west perhaps entering the philippine area of responsibility in the next few days some of them actually also strengthening this to a tropical storm something that we'll definitely need to keep an eye on and uh, one more thing here finally we have the uh, another low pressure area this is invest 95w this is 200 kilometers east of vietnam along the west philippine sea or the south china sea one thing you'll notice here is that exposed low level circulation center so there is definitely something brewing in this area still weak uh, the convective activity is still rather uh, elongated um, disconnected and also sheared from the uh, from the low level circulation center still take time to develop um, JTWC only giving it a low chance for now but as I said before computer models also hinting of uh, something to develop in this region wind shear uh, forecast to actually become lighter for in 5 to 10 knots in the next few hours so giving perhaps giving the system a chance of of development and actually if you take a look at the computer models uh, somewhat divided as of right now some of them uh, take this to the west perhaps into Vietnam and some of that look at this purple line over here taking it to the east perhaps perhaps moving into the Philippines by later next week nothing set in stone yet not in fact mm, this low pressure areas haven't even developed yet so you know until that happens computer models won't get a good handle on this uh, systems and the only thing we can do is obviously watch keep watching this uh, this two systems and as we end our video update for today take a look at the western pacific still watching Jalawat moving across japan and also the location of 94w around here and also 95w across the south china sea and you can also see that southwest monsoon also bringing some scattered rain showers actually across the philippines uh, in that area ends our video update for today again this a very busy western pacific you need to check out pagasa jma and your local officials also cadena uh, weather page the latest forecast and also the decor status inside the basin you can also check out westernpacificweather.com robert spedas videos our links to the images and also to the vi eyewitness videos sent to us by our viewers from okinawa and you can also check out our blog it's the gitnana bagyo for the latest in-depth uh, text details on uh, Jalawat and Iwinyar. Finally, if you have images or videos uh, around uh, the uh, Japanese islands as Jalawat blew across the region, please send them to us at philippineweather.com so we can share them in our tubecast and also we can share them on our webpage here at westernpacificweather.com. Stay safe, guys. Bye.